Now at 6, the man behind the music at Blazers Games gets a shock at his soon-to-open restaurant. We want people to get help, but we also want people to respect those that are trying to make a living. Needles and trash are piling up on his property. I'm quite sure that we're not the only business that have dealt with this. And in focus this morning, her father's life inspired the movie Hotel Rwanda, but genocide turned her family into refugees. Now she's sharing her story at Portland's TEDx. Plus, hanging on by a limb, literally. A pilot makes an emergency landing on top of a tree. We're hearing from the man who got him down to safety. And return of the e-scooters. Last time they were here, I absolutely loved it. I mean, frankly, the scooters are a menace. Love them or hate them, they're back on the streets of Portland with some new rules this time around. KGW News at Sunrise starts right now. And happy Friday, everyone. We start with this live look at the Willamette River from our camera at the Stoller Family Winery in Dayton. It is, it is a, a Friday morning. morning. How are you doing out there? Yes. <laughs> okay, say something again. I'll talk right over. Yeah. Try it. Try it. Go ahead. Just say something. Anything. Okay, fine. <laughs> Good morning. Thank you for joining us on this Friday. We're having a real smooth show, as you can tell it's, right it's from the stop. Uh, you know, there is a missing ingredient. Who's missing from the program? Well, there goes your answer. Rodney on the road this morning, Ashley. He is in Salem this morning for the Oregon Ag Fest. Hey, Rod, good morning. Save us. <laughs> oh, boy. I have, I have never seen this. We are shearing a sheep. And look at this. It just comes off like a big blanket. Oh my God. We're going to find out more about that this. I'm told that I'm told that if this particular sheep was not happy, she'd be kicking. So I guess she's getting ready for a warm summer, maybe. I don't know. All right, let's uh, let's take a look at our weather this morning. We're down here live at the Oregon State Fairgrounds for the 32nd uh, Oregon Agricultural Festival, and at the bus stop we go. Portland's been hanging out around 50 degrees this morning, so it's another nice mild start. And we're in the process of seeing what we're. Uh, Overnight clouds start to move out in many areas, so we're going to be opening up a mostly sunny Friday. At the bus stop, 60 degrees at lunchtime, be up into the mid-60s when the kids get out of school. I don't have enough hair for it to be a cool segment with me. I just think that's amazing. Again, more from the uh, Oregon State Fairgrounds coming up in just a bit. Lacey? Yeah, thanks, Rod. Your Friday morning commute still looks pretty good. Our drive time's over on the west side, about 15 minutes on Highway 26 inbound from Hillsborough to the Vista Ridge Tunnel. And 217 still looks good in both directions. You can see here on the map, we are seeing some slowing up in Vancouver. Just some minor brake tapping starting at about 4th Plain as you make your way down to the Interstate Bridge. But uh, doing pretty well in North Portland. Some minor slowing as you approach Columbia. Brenda? All right, thank you, Lacey. We begin with break. Breaking news and some streets in the city are shut down as officers look for a suspect who shot an officer with a BB gun. Christine Pitawanis just got to the scene for us this morning. Christine, what can you tell us? Good morning, Drew, Brenda. Yeah, right now we're near the corner of Southeast 187th Avenue and Stark in Gresham. And you can see flashing police lights, police here investigating. The scene is down Southeast 187th and police aren't really letting us go any further because of general safety issues. Right now, people are being allowed to leave, but not really to go any further down Southeast 187th unless they live in the area. But take a look at some of the video we have from this morning. We don't have too many details details at this point, but here's what we know. A Gresham police officer tells me it may have all started with a traffic stop, but it all ended with an officer shot in the arm with a BB gun. Apparently he is just fine this morning. Investigators say they've located a possible suspect and zeroed in on that person's location, but haven't arrested him yet. And that is the safety issue in the area. Back out here live detectives have been called out and Gresham police are calling this an active investigation, but we'll continue to learn more information about this and when we do learn those details we'll pass them on to you. Back Cr to you. Christine, thank you very much. This morning the man accused of killing two men and injuring another on a max train about two years ago will be in court. Jeremy Christian's trial isn't set to start until June but he's already been in court several times. Most recently a judge denied his lawyer's request to move the trial out of Multnomah County. We are still waiting to learn what today's hearing is about. It does start at 9 a.m. We will have a report in the courtroom following all developments. Now to Southeast Portland, where a unique case of vandalism caught off.
our attention. One reason is because of who owns the restaurant and the other is the wild surveillance video. Okay, let's start with this. You can see hypodermic needles scattered on the side deck of Culture Restaurant. This is at Southeast 24th and Hawthorne. The surveillance video we're talking about shows a woman leaving those needles all over the place. The owner says besides needles, they're fighting graffiti on the outside of the building and piles of human waste. He assumes the people responsible are homeless or perhaps dealing with mental illness. We want people to get help, but we also want people to respect those that are trying to make a living uh, for their family. And I'm quite sure that we're not the only business that have dealt with this. By the way, if Jackson looks familiar, that's because he's DJ OG1. He plays music at Blazer Games. He's filed a police report for his restaurant and also reached out to the city. We have a few incredible pieces of video in our show this morning. This is definitely one of them. Check it out. That plane right there, uh, the pilot crashed that wow. plane. It's a 60 foot tree. Somehow the pilot was able to get out of that plane without a single injury. It all happened near McCall, Idaho. The pilot is 79 years old. Apparently he called 911 as soon as the crash happened and a volunteer firefighter was able to climb the tree, use the safety harness and pulled the man down from the tree. The firefighter says, yeah, he's rescued people before, animals before, but never a rescue like this. I've rescued drones out of trees, climbed, got cats out of trees, but I've never climbed a tree with a plane in it. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty incredible. Now, we don't know what caused the crash. The National Transportation Safety Board is investigating. Officials say they might have used a helicopter to remove the plane, or they may have to, that is, they may have to use a helicopter to get that plane out of that tree. That is crazy stuff. We are tracking more headlines in your morning rush now. A massive EF3 tornado has carved a 130 mile path across Texas and Louisiana, killing a woman and her son. They died when a tree fell on their home in northern Louisiana. Now, this storm was part of severe weather that killed three people in Texas on Wednesday. Nearly 300 students are under quarantine at the University of California, Los Angeles, and Cal State University, LA, following a measles exposure. This scare, of course, comes as measles cases in the U.S. have hit a 25-year high. In Sri Lanka, the U.S. Embassy is warning Americans there to avoid places of worship this weekend. It, of course, comes in the wake of the Easter Sunday bombings. The country's prime minister saying would-be attackers are still on the loose. Authorities have lowered the death toll to 253, down from 359. The NFL draft in Nashville last night drawn a huge crowd, of course. Oklahoma quarterback Kyler Murray was the top player selected by the Arizona Cardinals. The Heisman winner was a first round pick just a year ago from Major League Baseball. He is the first athlete to ever be picked in the first round for both leagues. What a choice, huh? That. And your final story, basketball legend John Havlicek has died. The Celtics Hall of Famer is an icon across the league and in Boston. He was suffering from Parkinson's prior to his death. Havlicek was 79. And that's your morning rush. Speaking of the NBA, ladies and gentlemen, we still don't know who the Blazers are going to play in round two of the playoffs. Uh, we do know this. San Antonio beat Denver last night, which means there will be a game seven in that series. So we'll wait some more. But while we wait for the Blazers' next opponent to be revealed, let's relive the memory of Damian Lillard's terrific shot, the 37-footer that put the Blazers into the second round of the playoffs. You know, my question this morning is this. What if you had the opportunity to announce that game-winning shot. What if you were the that announcer the on night? TV that last night? Uh, what's that, Nina Milhoff, I ask you? Maybe you want to answer the question? Find the question again, Nina, is this. What if you were the announcer for that game-winning shot? It's actually the question we asked in this week's edition of Drew and You. You look like you might be a Blazers fan. I could be wrong, but you look like you might be a Blazers fan. You strike me as a Blazers fan, am I right? I am a Blazers fan. Did you see live Dame's game-winning shot to end the Thunder season. Yes, I sure did. Who didn't? Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> you were at the game. Yep. You saw in person Damian Lillard hit the game winner. Yes, we did. Uh, we're going to look at the shot again right now. What was going through your mind when he drilled that three? Dude, like, is he going to shoot it? Like, I thought he was going to pass it, and then he was just dribbling around. I knew he was going to make that shot. You knew it. <laughs> I knew it. Pretty freaking crazy. Pretty freaking crazy. 
I'd actually like to have some fun with you if you're willing to play along. I'm thinking that maybe as the Blazers continue this playoff run, they may need an emergency play-by-play -play person. Maybe you're that person. I could be. Let's find out. Oh no. <laughs> and I'm gonna replay Dame Shot right now and you're gonna give me the game-winning call. You're ready for this? I'm ready. You're bringing passion? I'm bringing passion. Okay, here we go. With five seconds, the mic is yours. All right, so Lillard is being guarded by George. He's a great defender. He's going against him. Look at him dribble. He's looking at the shot clock. In and out. Here we go. What's he going to do? Oh, no. Sets back. Takes it. And up for three. Swish! They win. Oh, no, he didn't. Yes, he did. Yeah. That was it. We were there. I was like, yeah, he did. I love that that, that woman. Oh, no, her, her, her daughter was in the background there like, Mom, I can't believe you just did that on TV. <laughs> so they were fantastic fans. We've been cheering on with fans all weekend long. Uh, today's playoff fan of the day. How about a few of them? We have Annette. We have Daryl. They are the Kaufmans from Milwaukee. And there they are showing off their Blazers gear. So if you'd like to be our KGW playoffs fan of the day, just tag MyKGW on your Facebook or Instagram posts or email us at MyKGW at KGW.com. They put me in a good mood. That is fun.